Cisco Secure Workload, Agentless, the power of firepower. And now we're going to actually leverage Secure Workload to push policy to firepower where we're not deploying any agents to the workloads. Let's get started. We're in Secure Workload and let's quickly have a look at the scopes and inventory. So we have a, an organization with data center and we see this data center 252 and web services. This is where we're actually going to run the application dependency mapping against the flow data that we're receiving from Firepower. First, let's go ahead and create the workspace to allow us to leverage application dependency mapping. We're gonna go ahead and this is gonna be applied to web services under that data center 252. And we're gonna automatically discover policy. I'm gonna go back a week and this will take some time. Again, it depends on how much data you have in regards to how long it's gonna take. So while that's running, let's go ahead and look at Firepower real quick. Now we're gonna come in here and we've got this policy. And one thing that you'll notice, or maybe you'll notice is, is that I'm using domains. I've broken this up into two separate data centers. They're domain based, which allows administrative control separation between the data centers. And in fact, this is where the user CSW API is assigned to make changes. Now, you'll notice a couple things here. The first thing is we've got a bunch of golden rules. So these are anything that an agent requires to communicate with Cisco Secure Workload. And you'll see that default rule is trust all traffic right now. So basically, this is a wide open policy that we're gonna work with. And this is a brand new data center. We're going to figure out and deploy the right rules that are required to allow the application to function. Let's go ahead and jump into object management. And we're gonna to go to external attributes. You're gonna see two external attributes here. These were already uh, applied to the device itself because I ran this in a scenario previous to running through this step by step. So that's why it's already there. If, if you didn't do that, this would all be net new. You wouldn't see the golden rules and you wouldn't see the external attributes. But here nor there, it doesn't really matter because you're not winning anything there at all. And this is where we're actually going through the process of creating the rules to push to that asset. Now that's the domain that we're actually focused on. So there was a little change from the previous video in regards to how we're pushing these policies. And we're still working away. That just shows you that it does take some time, but let's go ahead and check access to that web service. We can see we do have access to it. Why? Because that firepower rule set is wide open currently. Can we SSH to it? We should. Let's try. Now this is the management asset and we're gonna start doing some restriction because we don't want every asset to be able to SSH into that particular workload or workloads. And you can see we do have access here. Now this is an outcome we want to drive towards, so we're okay there. But this one here, we don't wanna be able to have access from any other host. Now this is a different IP, it's coming from a different host and they're still able to SSH into that workload as well. We don't want that. That's not an outcome that we desire. And so we're going to use application dependency mapping to figure out what policies should be in play. And if we need to, we can tweak them, but we don't have to recreate this right from scratch. We get to use the application dependency mapping capability of Cisco Secure Workload. And look at that. We're ready to go. And here's our default policies that were built, again, based on the flow data that we sent from Firepower into Secure Workload. It ran the analysis, and this is the outcome of that. Before we go ahead and apply the policy, what we want to do is make sure that the rules make sense. There should be an understanding of how the applications work within the environment, but we can see here we've got web services talking to the root, and there's ICMP, DNS, uh, port 80, so it just needs access to certain stuff, maybe to get updates and things like that. We also see it accessing the My Org using FTP and ICMP. We also see it within the data centers, um, some ICMP communication. We see some NTP communications that's taking place. 
And we see my org accessing web services on 8080. That was the port that's used and SSH. But you know what? Let's get rid of SSH. And let's be more specific here. So it did a good job to kind of collect everything and put it into one rule set, but this is not an outcome we desire. We want to specifically pick that 129 asset. That's our management host, but you'd have a management network perhaps. And we want it to be able to communicate to that web services under data center 252 using SSH. We want that to be allowed. And we are going to make this a priority of 90. And that way we know that it's always going to be in play here. We're going to go ahead and create this policy. And you'll see that now at the top there. And now that'll give that one host access. And the catch-all is deny. So this is micro-segmentation at its finest. We're in full enforcement or about to be in full enforcement mode. We're going to go ahead and deploy that policy now to Firepower. And now we're starting to build that control. Now this could be east-west traffic. We could do uh, more of a micro-macro type segmentation here but it allows us the ability to push controls to firepower in areas where we may not be able to deploy an agent. Now that workload, I could certainly deploy an agent, but let's assume that there is warranty that may be impacted if you deploy it, like a healthcare device or an operational environment asset. So uh, maybe we don't wanna do that, but we still wanna use uh, application dependency mapping. We wanna push policy. Now, in a few seconds, let's jump back into the rule set. We're going to see here, this is going to change, and we're going to see it's being modified by that CSW8. And there it is. API user is currently editing the policy. Now, that's pretty neat. It's now editing the policy. If we refresh shortly here, oh, it's already pushing it. That's how quick this happened. It's actually pushing it to the device. So the changes have been made. We just need to reload to see the policies that have been added here. And let's have a look. And look at that. Workload 7 all the way down to 17 have been added. It's using those external attributes for the uh, source and destination dynamic attributes. There's the port 8080 there. We see SSH at the top and we've got this block. So now it's not a wide open policy anymore. We actually have a deny at the end here. That's pretty cool because again, we've been able to figure out what rules were required for firepower as opposed to asking application teams and trying to figure this all out. Now, when you look at objects, external attributes for dynamic uh, objects, we can have a look at what is that object? And this is dynamic. So as assets get added, this will automatically get updated with new IP addresses. You don't need to push policy anymore to be able to drive that outcome. Now let's look at this one here. This will have a couple more. You can see there's 14 IPs or, or networks that have been assigned to that particular object. Again, that's all been driven based on the flow analysis that it did with application dependency mapping. Now let's make sure the application still works. Well, looks good. Let's just try to log in. Invalid, but it does work. So that's an outcome that we expected. We didn't want to change that. Now let's go ahead and see if we can SSH into that asset. And look at that, we're in. Now, the host that we're coming from is actually 129. I know I'm RDP'd into it, but that's a virtual instance that's on this asset. So this is 129 and it did have access. So that, that works, but have we actually blocked? it coming from any other host. Now this is dot 100. This is directly from this Windows host, not a VM within it. Now let's go ahead and, well, nothing's happening, right? I can't even connect to it. So it worked. Again, it figured out what the rule set was based on the flow data and the analysis that it, application dependency mapping it has done. Now this is pretty neat. If I come in here and delete one of the rules and save it, and push it out maybe, I don't, but I'm not even gonna push it out here. But if I save this, and imagine if I deleted uh, the SSH rule as an example, what happens here? It's constantly checking and making sure that this policy is in play and it's actually editing the policy. So Cisco Secure Workload, that user CSW API is going to put that 
back in play. So you're going to see this here. Number five is back. And it's automatically pushing that policy back to that device. Pretty cool stuff that allows you to drive towards macro slash micro based segmentation, driving towards a zero trust outcome.